Hi, welcome to Mastering Fantasy Design with Poser and Illustrator. My name is Nas Peters, and in this video, we will be taking a look at creating a concept sketch and drawing character design. Before creating the references, I want to place the idea I have in mind on the canvas, just so I have a rough idea as to where everything will be placed and how I'll want to position my characters in the environment. To do this, I open Photoshop and open a new A4 file, which I then rotate 90 degrees by going into Image, Image Rotate, 90 degrees, as I know I want it to be landscape oriented and not portrait. Once my canvas is ready, I create a new layer to start drawing on, and I see if I like the color and brush size before beginning with the very rough sketch. This is only to figure out the placement of where I want everything to go, so I'm not aiming for it to be pretty just yet. What I do already keep in mind is the depth of the drawing, so I've used a thicker brush to draw everything that is in the foreground, a slightly thinner brush for what is to go in the middle area, and eventually an even thinner brush to draw what is in the background. Coming up with a concept can either be really easy or not at all. Occasionally an idea just hits you, other times you can sit for hours staring at a blank canvas and come up with nothing. In this case, I knew I wanted to draw an archer after a conversation I had with my roommates, and so I played around with several ideas. I also knew that I wanted to play around with depth, character design, and some kind of pretty environment. Keeping all those elements in mind, I ended up with the idea of an archer unaware they are being watched in a grand forest-like area. I make the trees stand out by giving them a fill color to help further with the depth on a separate layer, using a thick round brush, same color blue, but the opacity set between 30 and 40 percent. I placed it on a separate layer from the line so that I could lower the opacity on the layer itself so the fill is more transparent. Once that done, I draw some stick figures into the environment with a rough idea as to how they'll be positioned. Moving on to character design. Because we will be customizing 3D models in Poser, we need to figure out what the characters will look like before entering that program. I have created a character sheet that has a sketch of a generic female body and that of a generic male body. It's just an outline to build on top of. In this case, we have an archer that I think travels quite a bit, eats more out of necessity rather than luxury, so I would imagine him to be fit and relatively athletic. Because he is an archer and is far ranged in battle-like situations, the muscles can be toned rather than excessively defined. That would be why I chose an average size body outline to sketch on top of. When drawing male characters, I tend to draw corners and curves very sharply as this helps add to the masculinity. This is why the eye shape has more of a square aspect instead of an oval. The other noticeable difference between drawing a man and woman's face would be that I tend to not define the upper lip in male characters. This helps define the masculinity further. To make a human look like they belong in a fantasy environment can usually be achieved through their clothes. Strangely enough, medieval clothing is often associated with fantasy today, and I personally find it a great source of inspiration to help me come up with clothing design. You always want to make sure the clothes work with whatever it is they're doing or whatever it is they represent. Since we want him to be an archer, I drew the cape to go over one shoulder alone, draping over the arm which will only move forward since it's the one used to hold the bow. Whereas I didn't want anything to hinder his other arm since he'd have to move it backwards. Keeping the medieval fashion in mind, I gave him relatively large sleeves, the shirt then tucked into a large waist belt and hanging down to his knees. He is also wearing knee-high boots, which after some research seem to be quite traditional for archers to wear in those times, and they look quite fancy, so I just went with it. It's okay to wing it sometimes and draw something for the sake of it being pretty. For the female characters, I'll be using an average sized body as well although I'll be making more body alterations to them than I will to the male character. The reason for this is because they will not be entirely human. I wouldn't say they are nymphs, or more specifically, dryads, but they are inspired from, and so they will have tree-like features. Therefore, the shape of the human body will only be used as a base to design their features on. I'm starting off with the facial features again. Because there are four, of course they'll have their unique features, but much like humans all have eyes, noses, mouths, etc., I want to sketch out a facial structure that I can then later use to apply unique characteristics on. I picture these creatures to be curious, mischievous, and playful. Although they have human features, because they are fantasy creatures, we don't have to follow human anatomy precisely. I give them overly large eyes and mouths to help define their mischievous and playfulness. Both features hold a lot of expression, and so by making them the focal point of the face, that is what the viewer will instantly see. 
The biggest alteration I made to the body and face were the shape of the shoulders which I gave a swirl design consistent with how I tend to draw trees using swirl patterns in the bark. And of course the temples are far more prominent than they would be on a human face. I also gave them excessively thin waist to help pronounce the hips, but decided to leave their chest area with as little definition as possible. These decisions I made was to reflect the shape of a tree in their body shape. Not exactly easy to interpret since trees are so different from one another, but the main thing they do have in common is that their foot, where the roots go into the ground, is usually wider than the rest of the bark that goes upwards. The other area we can have a lot of fun with is the hair. Because it can take any shape, I decided to make that the most prominent fantasy feature about them. I sketched them out in a way where the hair strands act like thin tree branches, twirling their way around the face, shoulders, arms, and body, strategically hiding the intimate areas at the same time. When the shape of the hair is giving you a hard time, it can be quite handy to draw it on a profile rather than a portrait, to understand how it is settled on the back of the head and along the neckline. It'll help give you a better idea and allow you to adjust the hair the way you want it to appear in the portrait with help from the profile. At this point, I'm not entirely sure about the coloring of these female characters yet. I'm hoping to give them some green and brown tints so they can camouflage into the trees, but that could also create the issue of having them fading away into the background. So if the green tints I have in mind happen to disturb the background's coloring, I am instead creating textures on their skin that can represent leaves and tree textures which can then act as camouflage whilst the rest of the skin is still fairly visible. In the next lesson, I will be introducing Poser and we will take a closer look at what tools we will be using to create our reference. Thank you for listening.